It's great to see all of you here. Um, so uh, as Alan said, I'm Homan, lead data scientist here at Datadog. And I'm going to be talking about some of our um, newer algorithmic alerting options. So um, first, I'm going to be introducing anomaly detection, which is a feature that should be like re being released like today or maybe tomorrow. Um, and this is about monitoring metric through time. So we're going to be looking at a metric's past history and use that to figure out whether or not it's anomalous. Um, and then also contrast that with outlier detection, which is monitoring a metric through space. So that is like, are these me several metrics close to each other, or is one of them very far away and an outlier? And then I'll talk a little bit about combining the two. So how do you monitor metrics um, using both anomaly and outlier detection at the same time? All right, so um, as you all know, um, Datadog's great for monitoring your services and systems. And we make it painless to set up alerts, right? Um, especially for things like resource metrics, like disk space that can um, be exhausted, or metrics you just understand really well, like this one where we know that if it goes to 1.5K, things go downhill, and then um, an alert will go off. But there are plenty of cases where um, these threshold alerts aren't sufficient, right? So say you have a trending metric. This is a metric that always goes down. Um, you're going to have to reset a threshold metric, um, a threshold alert constantly if you want to catch like these downward spikes, right? Because for it to catch that downward spike, um, it'll have to be set at a certain level, and then that metric keeps trending downward, so you'll have to reset it, reset it, reset it. And so you'll either reset it all the time or just get lots of false alarms. There's also um, seasonal metrics. So this metric, in the middle of every weekday, it spikes. Um, probably it has something to do with some sort of user behavior. And if you want to alert on this spike that happens in the middle of the night, a threshold um, alert's not going to be able to catch that. So we have something called change alerts. Um, so, and some people use change alerts to try to capture seasonal behavior. So um, say you wanted to catch this spike that happens in the middle of Thursday. So then you would do a change alert, say like, um, how different was this metric at that time of day from 24 hours before? And you see what'll happen is, um, what the change alert mon monitor actually uh, evaluates, it'll show that difference as that big spike in the middle of Thursday. But then you'll actually also get alerted like on Friday because that big spike wasn't there anymore. So um, you get like an extra alert. Um, and so like while change alerts are great, like it's not actually like the best use case for something like a se some seasonal behavior. And then of course, like all of these problems are just compounded if you have like metrics that are both trending and seasonal, which is um, the case for most business metri type metrics. And so to be able to alert on seasonal metrics and trending metrics um, and the combination of both, we have anomaly detection. All right, so um, anomaly detection is going to look at the past behavior of your metric, and it's going to alert when it deviates from what we think is um, normal behavior, and it does this in real time. Um, so the way it's going to work is we're going to predict the range of values that we think is normal, and we're going to represent that by this gray band. And anytime the metric leaves that gray band, we'll color it red and call that an anomaly. So um, it works really well for time boards and screen boards. You um, stick it on, and you can see. And it'll just be immediately obvious if your metric is being anomalous or not. And it's just another function. So it's as simple as just adding a function through the um, editor. And then, of course, you can set up monitors. Um, and so um, if you got an alert like this, it's like clear, like we expected this metric to be around 5 million. It's around, now it's around 6 million. You set it up so that um, if a certain percent, percentage of the time over this time window, it's anomalous, you're going to get this alert. And this nice little snapshot shows you that it is, in fact, outside of the expected range of values. And then once you get that alert, what are you going to do? Well, you should um, you can click through and go to the monitor status page. And so we show you that um, corresponding thing, uh, snapshot that you got. But we also give you some historical context, right? So like this alone doesn't really tell you like why the band is at five. And now that the metric is six, why that's anomalous. But if you click through to the historical context part, you can see like, in fact, like this metric is pretty much steady at where it is. And then the fact that it's up there at um, Six million, in fact, is like a, something that's anomalous. 
So um, how do we use the past history to tell you what we think is normal? So um, the simplest algorithm we have is called basic. And it pretty much does like the obvious thing, which is it'll just look at the immediate past and kind of calculate what the normal range of values is from what, what it's seen in the past, and then just draw the bands like that. Um, and so like we do, like instead of using mean and standard deviation, we use quantiles because they're more robust. And it's, um, it's great for like metrics that are steady or metrics that whose le levels, if they change, they change like very slowly. So um, basic being a somewhat robust, like for instance, like when it sees a spike like that, it'll ignore it and continue like drawing up the envelope that it draws. Um, and it won't be affected by that, which is nice. But in this particular case, the, um, these spikes are like actually regular occurring spikes that every happen every half hour. So you might want to go to one of our other algorithms. And so pretty much every other algorithm we have will not will be able to catch, capture this regular behavior and know that it's normal. So um, our first non-basic algorithm is something called robust. And we just take a page from like classical um, time series analysis. And what we do is we take the original metric, we decompose it into a, a trend component, a seasonal component, which leaves us with some noise. And um, that, gives us, that gives us the model for which um, we consider to be normal behavior. And the nice thing about the robust algorithm is that it lives up to its name and it's very robust. So by that I mean, like here's an anomaly that lasts like half an hour. Um, and notice how the band just doesn't budge, right? It's just like I, know, like, I know normal is down here. And even though like there was this anomalous behavior that lasted for like half an hour, like I'm gonna continue no saying that normal behavior is down here. Um, and this is like for better or worse because for instance, like say you made some change to your code and there's like a level shift to your metric and it'll con you actually want, like now normal behavior really is 20. So um, the flip side to robust is that even though um, it was an intended level shift, it'll continue f saying that normal behavior is down here for a long time and continue to call this metric anomalous for maybe for longer than you want. Um, and just like, it's nice to contrast it with basic where robust is robust and is robust to that half hour anomaly, whereas basic after a while starts to incorporate that within the bounds. And so you see the behavior there where the, just the, the band gets fatter a after the anomaly happens. Um, our next algorithm is called Agile. Um, it's a robust version of the classical Serima model for time series. And so the main idea is just that if you're trying to predict the next point, um, the, you probably want to use like the points that came right before it to get, make your prediction. So this is like basically the same idea as basic. Um, but the twist is that you're also going to look at like the same time of day, like the day before or the week before or several weeks before and help that inform you what you think the next point should be, and so you get, you're able to capture these, the seasonal behavior as well, um, and also the, the different trends. And so um, this allows it so that the predict ra predicted range is sensitive to like immediate trends, so you see like there's like, it goes a slight dip there, um, and even if this is not like a part of a larger trend, it'll pick that up, um, and it'll also pick up the longer term trends in seasonality. And then the last algorithm we provide is called adaptive. Um, and it's a blend of several different projections. And we're going to combine them using some ag agnostic online learning algorithm. Um, and it's useful if you're trying to use anomaly detection on a series that it's whose behavior is like changes over time. Um, and another advantage of adaptive is that unlike the agile or robust algorithms, it requires less history because it's adaptive and can kind of work with what it has. So um, all the algorithms have a single parameter, it's just the tolerance, and just controls how fat the band is. Um, and so it's just gonna, you should set it according to how much deviation you feel comfortable having. So, um, so we chose to define anomalies this way, like as drawing a band and something out, anything outside of the band being an anomaly. 
And the reason we did this is uh, it's really clear, right? Like visually, you know what, what's an anomaly. It's anything outside the band. And on top of that, you also know like what the algorithm thinks of as being normal behavior. And that, because that, that band says, if the metric is between this, and this value and that value, it's probably like fine. Um, there is a consequence of this, which um, what is that this a definition of anomaly of something being outside of a band plays very strangely with time aggregation. So here um, we see like a week and we see this red spike and like let's zoom in. And so we see that spike, um, but we also see this like tiny spike right next to it that wasn't in that picture before. And I think most people have the intuition that Oh, that's okay, right? Like um, when I was looking up before, each time point was an average or something uh, or a sum of the points around it. And so that little spike got washed out and people are okay with this. Now here's a less intuitive example. Um, so here we see a metric that's around eight. The bands are drowned around like nine and seven and then there's a spike at ten that goes to 10. Right, now let's zoom in. And now the anomaly disappears. <laughs> so um, what happened? So um, see like now the metric is still centered around eight, but now there's a lot more variance, right? So like the metric goes from like three to 13 all the time. Um, and then this might be harder to see, but if you look at that section there, um, the variance actually shrinks a little bit and the, the mean goes to like around 10. And when you aggregate that up, that leads, that's that spike over there. And so if you're trying to um, use anomaly detection on a monitor and you want to have this like short time window and you don't care about spikes like that, you're in luck. <laughs> um, if you do care about spikes like that, um, you have some options like you can either smooth the function so that um, it'll smooth the function so that it reduces the variance, which will reduce the bands and thus be able to catch spikes like that. Or you can use like the time roll up so that you're using like the looking at the same points, same um, resolution points that you see in like the zoomed out version. But this is just like a consequence of between time aggregation and using bands for anomalies. So um, the anomaly detection we've seen so far has been like all temporal in nature and we're comparing like a single metrics um, values with its past history. So now I'm gonna um, contrast this with outlier detection, which we announced last year, and that considers like the space of metrics. So intuitively, metrics are close to each other if um, they have like similar values at every time point. And outlier detection can tell you when one of them has deviated from those. Right. Um, this particular example comes um, where this is, um, running at, this is running outlier detection on our own systems. Each line is a host for a particular app, and you notice there's um, outlier detection picked up a group that seemed like it was doing less work than the others, and it turns out that just it was running a slightly older system version and upgrading it and solved the problem, and they all started doing the work that they should have been doing. Um, so we have two different algorithms for you um, to use. One is called dbscan. It's um, named after a clustering algorithm. And the way it works is um, you have a bunch of time series. We're gonna calculate a new median time series where you just, for each tick, you calculate the medi median value, calculate the distance between each series and the median series, and then take the median of those distances, and then if those, that's like what we consider to be close. And then anything that's close to each other is like the main group, anything that's far is far. But um, let's like, go down to like two dimensions, it's just easier. Um, let's say these like, e let's say these five points, each of these five points is a time series. So um, the new median series is like this purple point here. So notice that it's like li lined up with the third point on the x-axis and the third point on the y-axis. And then if you look at all the different distances between the gray points and the purple points, the median distance there is that span right there. So that's what we're gonna be considering close. And then we're just gonna draw those balls around, like uh, that distance around all the points. And then we're gonna cluster together anything that's touching. 
And so, and then the biggest one is going to be what we consider to be normal behavior. And then the outlier is anything that's not within that group. And so, this picture is the same thing, but applied to like s 60 dimensions as opposed to two. Um, the other algorithm is called MAD, which stands for the median absolute deviation from the median. Um, take a slightly different approach. We find like the median value of all the points, and that's that re thick red line. And then we calculate the MAD, which is like the robust version of standard deviation. And that's like, and then we add that to the median. And so those are the dotted lines. And then if a certain percentage of the metrics points are outside of those bands, then we'll call that an outlier. All right, so um, now that we bo have both anomaly detection and outlier detection at our disposal, like how do we combine them? So anomaly detection is like definitely not something you should be applying to all your metrics, right? Th it's most useful for metrics that have like some sort of trend or seasonality that you want to capture. Um, and outlier detection, you also don't want to be like applying to every kind of metric. It should be for groups of, metri groups of metrics that should be behaving similarly. And so the prototypical use case is, say you have some metric um, for some application, and you should, and that has like this nice um, seasonal behavior, use anomaly detection on that in aggregate. And then if you're worried about if like a, a particular host might be going bad, then you also apply outlier detection to the, the group of hosts. And so b by monitoring both like this like historical time aspect in aggregate, and also this space, um, aspect across all the different hosts, you get, you get the best of both worlds and are able to monitor them together. So um, thanks. Um, I hope you find an anomaly and outlier detection to be useful for your monitoring needs. And I'm going to be around all afternoon, so I'm happy to talk about if any particular use cases you might have. And if you have questions, I'm happy to take them now. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, uh, the question was uh, if we, we deal with weekends, and yes, yes, we do. Um, um, so, like, the kinds of seasonalities we're looking at are, like, daily, right? So, like, how's, like, one day compared to the next? And then also weekly, like, how does one week compare to the next? And right now, each, like, we look about, like, I would say, like, six weeks of past history and use that to calculate, figure out, like, what's normal at, that, at this moment in time. Yeah, and like, yeah, this is a good example. Like, you know, th those are the f five w uh, weekdays, and that's the weekend, and we know that it's like flatter on the weekend. Is it possible to uh, uh, leverage uh, the backend procedure function? Uh, because we, we have a metric. Uh, some 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 of metric has some sort of known uh, constant uh, background noise, uh, and then we want to alert based on the the real metric minus that constant um, background noise. Uh, I, I, is it possible to leverage this anomaly detection to because it, we, we we can in principle subtract some sort of a constant uh, background metric, and then and then alert it based on that. But, uh, 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 but I, 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 there's also a concern that we, we don't know, you know, this uh, behavior of this uh, background noise, uh, in the if that constant background noise uh, trend, uh, it, it will, a trend, a trend in some sort of positive or negative way, we, we constantly have to readjust this uh, constant background noise. Uh, can, can you uh, address uh, whether the, 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 anom uh, the anomaly detection uh, might, might Sure. Um, if the noise like really is this constant, like anomaly detection should have no problem like picking it up. Um, and even and, and if it like if the the distribution of that constant noise is like slowly changing over time, like then it should be fine. Um. So with that, um, thank you very much, Homan. We will. Uh... <laughs>